Hello everyone, Guardian E here with another live reaction and first impression video for Fire Emblem Heroes, and tonight we are getting the reveal of the next set of Seasonal Units Special Heroes to get dropped into the game just later this week. So it is springtime, it is approaching, which of course means we are getting some bunnies, bunny flavored units for the next seasonal, which is always exciting to me, uh, always has a special place in my heart, the spring units being the first seasonals ever in Fire Emblem Heroes, sort of paving the way for seasonals going forward. And to me, the spring units always have a really nice blend of fun and silly, and maybe with a nice little slice of cheesecake on the side as well. So I'm hoping for that today. Uh, as you can see, the silhouettes on the left-hand side, Predominant guesses are Severa and Inigo from Awakening, or uh, Selena and Laszlo from Fates, if you want to go that route. But either way, those two characters definitely do seem to fit those silhouettes on the left-hand side. So I think those are pretty much shoe-ins, which of course begs the question of who the other two units are going to be. I think traditionally with these types of banners, they'll have representation kind of split down the middle. So if we are getting two Awakening units for the ones that are in the silhouettes here... I think that whoever is on the other side is not going to be Awakening related at all. Then again, we could get a Harmonic unit this go around, so really the sky's the limit here. So let's get started. I'm excited. Let's watch the trailer together, blind for the first time. All right, let's get started. Did not see the preview, or I mean the thumbnail, so I have no idea who is revealed. Like bunnies hopping into spring. Special heroes to battle. Who will it be? Oh, well, there we go. Bitter Blossom. What, uh, what nomenclature are they going to go with? Severa. Okay. Kaya 8 did a great job on her art. She actually looks really good. I like the black ears. It's really nice. Uh, okay, she's going to be a cavalry unit. Got the lull speed, lull, the more cavalry, dual skills, and the like. <laughs> Very sassy. As expected. Going to get the Laszlo next. Yeah, okay, so Festival Flower, it is going to be Inigo, I'm guessing. I love that bow design. <laughs> it's going to be a Flying Green Archer, which, do we have a Flying Green Archer? Yeah, we do, we do, okay. Uh, G Dual Flying, so again, busting out those dual skills. He looks pretty fabulous, I have to say. Verdant Dragoon, Minerva? Hey, she looks pretty good. I like the little top hat design. It's nice. Uh, she's going to be a cavalry too, which feels a little weird because I, I just I identify Minerva as a flyer. But it does, uh, does let her kind of branch out, right? All right, and Spring Harmony. This is going to be Mer and Na, I guess. So little, little baby dragons working together. Um... Lilac Jade Breath, Distant Counter built in, Dragon's Ire, okay. Alright. Oh, I love the little flowers on the Dragon Sprite. That's a nice touch for sure. Alright, and then the Harmonized Skill, which we will go into more at length uh, on the rewatch and the review of the actual skills that they have. But we can enjoy their animation here. The little, uh, looks like the sprite always mirrors the attacking animation, so. Uh, when they do the harmonized skill. So we'll see what this is all about. It looks like it gives them Iot's shield at least, and then some damage reduction as well. Easy spring breezy. <laughs> Easy spring breezy. Alright, it's cute art. It's cute art. Alright, Willful Rabbits, Paralog Story. Um, I like how... <laughs> Minerva looks so serious in such like a ridiculous garb. Okay, oh wait, hold on. Let hold on. I <laughs> I got so distracted. I didn't take a look. So who is who is that? Is that I uh I can't tell who that axe cavalier is. Like my uh, I the the hair is blocked by the health bar, so I can't actually like my first instinct was was Silas, but that doesn't make any sense because Silas is is uh, Fates, and so these are the Awakening versions of these characters, so I'm, I'm not entirely sure. It might be another Awakening character. I'm sure it's in the um, in the, the the notice in the game, so everybody who's watching this already knows who it is, but we are getting a free Axe Cavalier, at least, which could have a nice inheritable Axe, maybe? Alright, so 
Uh, special heroes are here, Willful Rabbits, uh, starting on the 17th of March and going for essentially an entire month, as usual. Uh, there is going to be even color distribution on the banner, and it looks like Minerva is going to be the four-star focus unit of the banner, interestingly enough. So blue is going to yield Minerva as the four-star focus. So two of the guesses were spot on, Severa and Inigo, and then we've got Minerva rounding out the uh, the batch alongside, uh, again, the little baby dragons of Mur and Na. I believe that's Na. But Severa, Inigo, and Minerva all have their very loyal fans, so I'm sure there are going to be some happy folks out there that are going to be summoning hard for this banner, no matter who, or no matter what skills are revealed. Uh, it does look like they are bringing out a bunch of dual skills uh, all the same, they're, they're still pumping those out because I guess they're trying to cover all their bases to introduce the Tier 4 skills. Uh, but yeah, let, let's go ahead and rewind, take a closer look at their art, take a closer look at their skills, and see if this is uh, ultimately a banner that I think is worth pulling for. Alright, so starting things off with the Bitter Blossom, very appropriate name for her. <laughs> Kaya 8, as usual, doing a bang-up job with the art and with Severa here. Uh, she is going to be a Cavalry Red Tome user, and, and Severa has her signature twin-tail look. Um, I like the bunny, bunny outfit design that she has here. The leggings themselves have this reddish-brown hue that kind of matches the hair that she's got as well. I really like the dark, fluffy bunny ears that she has. They feel like they've got a little bit more of an edge to them. Like They're a little bit edgier than, than the standard... Um, then or maybe more bitter than the standard uh, bunny ears. Get a little bit sharper on the angles there, and you got the purple on the middle that, of course, matches the the lining of the purple on her uh, on her outfit's tail there. I like that she has this black sheer kind of sparkle spangled uh, like accessory hanging off of her shoulder there. It's like nice and fashionable. Just kind of adds a little bit of flair to the overall look. So yeah, I mean she's she's rocking the bunny suit. Looks pretty great. Let's keep going here. And uh, her voice line's very, very cheerful despite her uh, her kind of glaring at us in the art. Um, so here here are her skills. Uh, Gulen Combi Egg, I guess. Uh, 14 Might is going to be exclusive to her, so it's not going to be inheritable. Uh, it's going to have a killer slash slaying effect at the outset. Uh, at start of combat, if foe's HP is greater than or equal to 75%, grants attack speed plus 6 to unit during combat, so an in-combat buff. And also, if unit initiates combat, and unit or, or an ally has already entered combat during the same phase, this unit attacks twice. Huh, so that's a funky little description. So, killer slaying effect is always solid, always very, very good. Um, and then, the condition of the HP of the enemy being at 75% is pretty reasonable. Um, that does mean that she's going to get a boost to her attack and speed, which is going to ensure that she does more damage and doubles a little bit easier. And of course, if the enemy has above or equal to 75% HP, that is when she's going to want to do the most damage. So, you know, that does that does help. It also does uh, avoid the um, the deflection that, that, that like, uh, Winter Bernie has, where she reduces the foe's HP below, or her allies' HP below 100%. So, um, so it's a nice sort of middle ground as far as the condition is concerned, so it's going to be relatively easy to get that in-combat buff of plus 6 attack and plus 6 speed. Now, this is where it gets interesting. If she's initiating combat, so it has to be player phase only, and, uh, she's, and somebody has already um, acted on her team, then the unit attacks twice. And when it says unit attacks twice, I'm I'm saying I'm thinking that's a brave effect. Usually, when it says attacks twice, that's what that means. Usually, when they're talking about doubling, they're ta they say a follow up attack. So essentially, this ends up being a brave tome as long as somebody else has acted on the team or she has acted and she's being danced. Because you notice it says unit or an ally has already uh, entered combat. So as long as somebody, including her, has already acted, um, as long as she player faces after that. Uh, she's going to get a, a Brave Tome effect. And because she has no speed penalty, I don't know what her speed is going to be, but considering that she has plus 6 attack and plus 6 speed built into as a, as a buff on her weapon, that does mean that she probably has some quad potential. So all that being said, she's a Cavalry Red Tome user, which of course also means that she may be fit for a Cav line defense in Aether Raids. Um, she's certainly going to, to fit that very well. Moonbow for the special is going to be a natural pick because she has a killer slaying effect on her weapon. Moonbow is going to have a one uh, charge cooldown. And because she's going to be able to have a brave effect on her weapon, that does mean that when her first initiation, she's going to attack once, it's going to charge Moonbow, and then the second attack is going to be a Moonbow. We've seen it before. We know what that's all about. This, this is, you know, what year is it? Classic, classic Reinhardt strats from way back when. 
Um, red dual cavalry four for the A slot. So grants HP plus five, plus two to all stats otherwise, and then the whole spiel about uh, BST and having um, specific unit stats that equal up to 180 or 175 depending on the situation. So again, I've, I've said my spiel about the tier four of the dual skills. I think they are fine and a necessary evil because of the um, deficiencies and inadequacies of arena scoring, but um, they fulfill that role. So, so you can, this is a source for them. A uh, lull speed res three for the beast slot inflicts speed res minus three on foe and neutralizes foes bonuses to speed and res during combat. Those activated buffs lull skills are excellent. They're amazing. And they're especially going to be proficient on her for, uh, to be able to essentially make, ensure that she, she quads, I guess, and also does as much damage as possible. Just hitting that res stat on the, uh, on the enemy target joint hone attack for the C slot. Uh, at start of turn, if unit is adjacent to an ally, grants attack plus five to unit and adjacent allies for one turn. Makes a lot of sense. Thinking in in the context of a cav line, uh, she wants to have an opportunity and the ability to uh, grant as much activated attack on any buffs to any of her allies as well as herself, and that kind of takes care of that. Okay, well, we'll have to see what her stat line is going to be, but at the end of the day, she just seems like she's a better Red Tome Reinhardt at the end. I mean, that, that that's really what it comes down to. She has a condition for her Brave effect, but the condition is very easy to manipulate, and she doesn't have a speed penalty, which means that she's made for quadding. She's going to get additional bonuses with her weapon, and then she also has a Killer Slaying effect. I mean, all of that combined is very, very deadly. Um, and then you know, you can remove the Red Duel Cavalry on the A slot and slap in Death Blow 4, and then with the Seal, slap in Death Blow 3. She's going to proc Moonbow whenever she first initiates. Uh, she's going to have the Lull Speed Res, which means that she's going to negate an enemy's ability to bolster their defenses and be able to defend both either prevent the, the quad or uh, prevent the amount of damage that they're taking. So yeah, I mean, she's definitely geared towards that archetype. She's probably going to Probably going to handle it beautifully, but we'll have to see what her attack stat is is like. I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be pretty you know, pretty moderate. So uh, let's let's keep going. Let's see what uh see what her attacking art is going to be. I like that. I like the flourish here. Okay, I like that angle. I like the the dynamic pose here, and you do get a better look at that little um, sheer scarf that she kind of has. That's pretty stylish. There's something about the fact that the 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 um the yellows and the browns and the whites are a little bit more muted and it lets the blacks really kind of starkly stand out like the blacks and the purples so it's really it's it's nice it's nice kaya it always does a pretty great job with the art that is a huge spring explosion and then here's the moon bow um bam all right pretty nice and we do confirm i mean it said times four so she's quadding there so here is the festival flower Inigo, all right, let's pause here and take a look. I love the bow design. I love the fact that it has the little bunny faces or the bunny heads and the ears make the uh, the arc that's uh, the arch that's there for the actual bow. You can even see with the arrow how the, the arrow, arrow point, the arrow head is actually a carrot. And then the other end of the carrot is like a leaf, like a carrot leaf, I guess. I like the calming pastel, like periwinkle blue, I guess, of the of his vest and his cuffs. Uh, he's got a, a wink and a smile, as we know Inigo often uh, often has on his face. His bunny ears look really, really soft and delicate. I, I don't know, there's something about them. They look just especially fuzzy. Uh, but they're also black, just like with Severa. So I guess they, they have that in line with themselves. So he's going to be a green, uh, a green flying archer, which is an interesting combination. <laughs> you don't look ridiculous. You look fabulous, Inigo. All right. So he's going to have Springy Bow Plus. This is going to be an inheritable weapon. Uh, it's going to be 12 might, effective against flying foes. Of course, at start of combat, if foe's HP is greater than or equal to 75%, grants attack speed plus 5 to unit and neutralizes unit's penalties to attack and speed during combat. Okay, so uh, as we often see with these types of banners, uh, sort of a watered-down version of Severa's unique weapon. Uh, at least a little bit. It borrows some... some elements and conditions so at start of combat foes hp being equal to or greater or equal to or greater than 75 percent gets a plus five to attack and speed to unit um which is which is solid for sure and again that's a pretty easy condition to meet 
Okay, that's a pretty potent effect. Again, with all of the game modes that we have that are just peppered with debuffs, map wide debuffs all over the place, being able to neutralize debuffs to those specific stats is pretty valuable. So, and, and this being an inheritable weapon, I could absolutely see this being slapped onto a dedicated archer just to take on certain challenges and against like certain map configurations and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I definitely could see the uses here. Uh, rally attack speed plus for the assist, grants attack speed plus six to target ally for one turn. It's just a dual rally. Green dual flying four for the ace lot. Not gonna go over this again, but basically what I what I said with uh, Severa applies here as well. They are just trying to crank out these tier four uh, dual skills. This one appeals to me a little bit more just because I do use um, some dedicated green flyers. And so this one could be useful. Unfortunately, my dedicated green flyers really have um, they kind of have a dedicated A slot, so I don't know if I could really swap out this skill so so commonly. But at the same time, it's nice to have access to this skill, um, so it's nice that it's here. And he also has attack speed rain 3, so for the C slot, he has inflicts attack speed minus 4 on foes within 2 spaces during combat. Really, really great rain skill that's going to increase his survivability by reducing the enemy's attack. And then it's also going to increase his ability to uh, to double. So that's pretty powerful. Um, so yeah, he's got some great stuff. Honestly, he's got some excellent fodder. So he is absolutely a unit that's kind of worth going for if you if any of these skills or weapon uh, strike your fancy. Let's see what else. I mean, that, that that's really kind of what, how they built him to be um, as like skill fodder. I mean, he's he's uh he's otherwise probably got some pretty decent stats and everything, but like his kit isn't geared or centered towards a specific thing. I feel um, other than just being kind of pretty darn good uh, skill fodder. So here we get a better look at the bow, which is inheritable, of course. And it looks like he has a, a carrot on his shoulder as well. Is that supposed to be like some, some carrot armor on his shoulder? I'm not entirely sure, but he's got a bright smile on his face. He looks fantastic. I think I also get a better look at the, uh, the fade in his, in his very soft looking bunny ears. Yeah. And he's got the fabulous scarf, just like Severa does actually, now that I'm thinking about it, but it's just a blue hue. So yeah, he looks great. Um, there he goes, and here is Minerva, so Verdant Dragoon. Eggs, eggs in pretty colors. Okay. <laughs> and here is Minerva, the four-star focus unit of the banner. Love her fiery red hair and her fiery expression, too. She looks so super serious, despite being in this somewhat gaudy and silly outfit, which is something that I love, that juxtaposition. I feel like a lot of people don't really like that about the Spring Banners, but that's like what I love about it, is that it's, they're just they're just so fun. They're fun-filled and silly. But regardless, I think Minerva looks really great here. I love the crimson of her tunic. It's matched by the little ribbons that she has, both on her gloves and it looks like on her, on her ankles. Like, she's got like little, I think they're boots, but I can't tell because it's blocked by the text there. I absolutely adore the top hat look with the little bunny ears. I think it adds a nice little twist. And she does kind of have a card dealer look to her a little bit. Like, because she has, you know, the tunic with the buttons, the, the double-breasted buttons down the middle. The bunny suit itself kind of snug around the hips. And I do like how Mayo did accentuate and emphasize the musculature and tone of her legs with the with the uh, shading and the sculpting there. So it, she looks really great here. And then her weapon is adorable. So it's a lance, of course, and it has the, these little Easter pastel designs and colors on it with a cute little bunny motif at the top that just matches her top hat as well. Um, yeah, she looks pretty awesome, I think, overall. She's going to be, again, a cavalry lancer, which isn't something that I associate Minerva with as being a cavalry unit, but that's okay. And it is going to be an inheritable lance. Springy Lance plus 14 might. Uh, at start of combat, if foe's HP is greater than or equal to 75%, grants attack speed plus 5 to unit and neutralize the penalty. So just like we had with Inigo, I mean, this is going to be the lance version of that weapon. A uh, bonfire for the special does seem to indicate that she might have some pretty potent defense. Uh, attack defense solo 3, also in line with that. Uh, if unit is not adjacent to an ally, grants attack defense plus 6 during combat. Makes a lot of sense with cavalry units, of course. They are a natural fit with solo skills because they do tend to overextend with their additional movement. Uh, odd attack wave 3 for the C slot. At start of odd number turns, it uh, grants attack plus 60 unit and adjacent allies for one turn. Um, so, uh, you know, having access to the lance is pretty good because, again, I think, I think it has its uses. Having access to the solo skill or another source of the solo skill is pretty good, too. The wave skill... Uh, I mean, we're kind of past the point where the wave skills have see, see a lot of use, but at the same time, I think that um, having another source of it doesn't, 
I mean, it doesn't hurt. It could be worse, I guess is what I'm getting at. Um, even though we do have sources of Odd Wave Attack 3. So um, I really think that if people are going to be pulling for her, they're going to be pulling for essentially a merge project with her um, or to get sources of the Lance or Solo skills. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look at her attacking art here. Procking that bonfire. Oh, I love this. So this is her special art, of course. The lighting and the explosion of eggs. It looks like that's flying up. But I love that her weapon has these kind of this like shock wave or pulse that's coming out of it. It's really cool. And the uh, the expression of the rabbit <laughs> on the end of it is is super adorable. Um, I like that. Uh, I like that she's kind of holding on to her hat too, just to kind of brace for impact almost. Um, but she still has kind of a grin on her face as she's like, I guess, launching herself forward. So it's it's pretty great. I like it. I do like it. She is a princess and a warrior. Uh, and then finally, rounding things up, out uh, Spring Harmony, we have some baby dragons on deck. So we have the harmonic duo of Mur and Na here. They are going to be a colorless dragon, a flying colorless dragon at that. And uh, with, I mean, cute designs, of course, um, with the the pink and the orange pastels. Um, I, I, you see, you get this sense of vibrancy, even with like Mur's wings. They have this like this green and this yellow that just kind of matches with uh, with what Na is wearing, for example. And then they have these really cute little um, little bunny hats on top. So, yeah, that's pretty cute. And they're holding uh, some, like, I don't know, are they little lanterns or whatever? Uh, so a Lilac Jade Breath is going to be their weapon, 16 Might. It's going to have a killer slaying effect. Um, if foe initiates combat or if foe's HP is 100% at start of combat. Interesting, so, okay. Grants attack speed, oh, so plus 5 to all stats uh, to unit during combat and reduces damage from attacks during combat and from area of effect specials uh, by 40%. And then it has a... Uh, an adaptive damage component to it too. Okay. All right. So killer slaying effect, solid. Um, they're going to be enemy phase based naturally. So as long as the they're enemy phasing, they're going to have the plus five to all of their stats. Um, but even if they're player phasing and the enemy has 100% HP, they're going to get plus five to all of their stats. So that's an in-combat buff. And then damage reduction of 40%. That's not with the first attack. That's not with the second attack. That is with all attacks. And it's with combat with attacks in combat and out of combat with area of uh, effect at specials. So they're really, they've really kind of given up as far as putting some conditions on these damage reductions. I mean, at this point, it's just everything. So as long as she meets the condition, she gets 40% damage reduction on everything. Feels a little lazy, to be honest with you. I, I'm not in, I'm not in love with that being so pervasive um, and not having really any conditions. But I mean, I guess that's kind of where we are. Um, yeah, I, I that it is what it is. And then so we have uh, the adaptive damage, which of course is, is just always kind of built into these breath weapons. I mean, it's going to be solid. If she's geared towards enemy phasing in general, having the killer slaying effect is always going to be good. And then getting plus five to all stats whenever she's enemy phasing and reducing damage by 40%. Those two things in tandem are just very potent for an enemy phase unit and being able to just, just like sit there and tank. Um, so, and then she's going to have noontime for the special, which of course she, it's going to have a lower cooldown, um, at one. And that means that when she does proc it, she's going to replenish health. So it's going to add to her sustain distant counter for the ace slot. So not only is she going to be a source of distant counter, she's going to run it very well because again, she is just going to be a strict enemy phase unit and distant counter works particularly well with breath skills that have that adaptive damage component to it. Uh, Dragon's Ire for the B-slot, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 50% and foe initiates combat, neutralizes effects that prevent unit's follow-up attacks, and unit makes a guaranteed follow-up attack. So that's going to be a natural pick for her because she's going to be enemy phasing, she has noon time for the sustain to be above 50%. And, uh, and it's it's essentially quick repost on steroids. I mean, she's going to have the guaranteed follow-up attack um, on, on enemy phase. So she may have pretty middling speed, maybe even low speed, but Dragon's Ire is essentially going to neutralize any wary fighter type effect that's going to prevent follow-up attacks and then guarantee her follow-up attack. So it's effectively kind of doubling down um, on on allowing her to, to double attack. And then attack res rain 3 is a natural pick for the C slot. Obviously works very, very well for her. She doesn't care about the speed because Dragon's Ire is going to allow her to double. And then she wants to prevent the enemy from doing more damage. So that's the that's the um, the minus to the enemy's uh, attack. And then increasing the damage that she does by uh, 
by debuffing the enemy's res. So yeah, I think Murr is going to be super annoying to deal with at the end of the day. Um, we haven't even gotten to their harmonic skill effect yet, but I mean, she's going to be an absolute, absolute bruiser on enemy phase. All of these stat boosts, all this damage reduction that's kind of I, I don't want to say it's unconditional, but it's basically unconditional. As long as she's enemy facing, she's going to get all of these bonuses, all of these effects, and she's going to get uh, be able to double with impunity, um, and then and then debuff the enemy. So it's just all in all, she's going to be very 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 tanky. Um, let's go keep going and take a look at their uh, harmonic skill together, and their art of course. So it's just uh, it's just Mur that's going to transform here, and then you know of course they are both launching themselves forward. So here is the attacking art, uh, pretty pretty cute, pretty cute. I, I actually we're one at this point we have three Murs in the game I think right, including this one. So we're one away from a Mur emblem technically. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, the art style the art style definitely fits these characters. Very very cutesy, very very cutesy moe. You know, that, so. Uh, I, I do like the breath effect, that, like, pink flash uh, explosion. So let's take a look at the harmonized skill. So, grants resonance blades uh, and the following effect to unit and allies from the same titles as unit for one turn. Foe cannot make a follow-up attack. Okay, I was I was wondering, that's, like, the one element missing from her skills. But, <laughs> so this, this takes care of that. Her harmonized skill basically takes care of that. Grants the following effect to unit for one turn, neutralizes effective against flying bonuses... I see, okay. Oh man, Resonance Blades grants attack speed plus four during combat for one turn. Harmonized skills can be used. So it's kind of interesting because I, I feel like I feel like speed is not something that Murr cares about. Um, in fact, I can even see her, her speed right there is 25. Clearly not something that's a consideration for her. So the fact that she just has Harmonized or Resonance Blades kind of built in is really more for the benefit of her allies than anything else. The, the additional attack is going to be great too, but... The reality is, is that a character like her probably would have benefited from having even more defensive bonuses because that's really what she's geared towards as being just an enemy phase tank. Um, so it, it does grant the, the foe cannot make a follow-up attack, which again was I think one element missing from her kit is that she was guaranteeing her own ability to double but didn't have anything in her kit that uh, that disabled the enemy from following up attacking or follow up attacking. Um, so here it is. Th this is where it, it's built in. It's built into her harmonized skill. And then, of course, it gives Murr herself the effect of neutralizing effective against flying bonuses. So archers, you know, she'll just shrug that off without any problem. So, yeah, I mean, that really just rounds her out uh, as a character. I mean, it, it, it basically eliminates all, all of the defensive weaknesses that she has. I mean, the one weakness that she they still have... The big one that they have is a dragon effective weakness. So if you have weapons that are good against dragon effect or that are dragon effective, then those will be effective against her. Um, but the fact that she's colorless means that you're going to have a difficult time employing effective damage in any capacity against her uh, unless you have dragon effective weapons. And of course, we can take a look at their stats here. So 40 HP, 54 attack, 25 speed, 40 defense and 35 res. So... Yeah, I mean, pretty powerful. Pretty powerful all around. The, the, the fact that they took away from her speed stat, um, which they should have in order to kind of help min-max her a bit, um, does mean that her defensive stats are going to be sizable and her attack stat is going to be generous as well. So I mean, it's what we would have expected. Again, I think that uh, dragon effective weapons are, are basically her their one weakness as well as potentially raven tomes. Uh, I am a huge advocate of raven tomes, as most of you probably know. Um, so that's going to be another tool to use against them. But otherwise, they're going to be, again, pretty formidable as a as a duo, as a just a, a tank that sits there and can just soak up damage and heal and and be a menace on enemy phase. So starting on the 17th of March, we have Willful Rabbits. I, my gut reaction is that the harmonic duo is is pretty busted. I think they're pretty darn strong. I think they don't have a lot of potent weaknesses. Um, on enemy phase and, and that's just my gut reaction you know I might be missing something some elements of it but I think they're going to be very very strong I think for a, again for a flying um, for a flying tank because they're not armored they're a flying tank so they have increased mobility or you know, some maneuverability they can go over certain obstacles um, they can plant themselves where where armor units wouldn't be able to and the one disadvantage to that is that they don't have access to some like armor skills and like the save skills that um, that intelligence systems has been pushing lately. 
and the save skills would coincidentally work extremely well on them if she if they were able to to use them but uh yeah i think they're going to be very very powerful so obviously i think that the harmonic duo is going to be um a big draw to this at least as far as gameplay wise and utility wise i think people are going to be summoning for them i think severa brings a lot to the table well not a lot new to the table but the fact that she is a basically a better red reinhardt means that she's going to fulfill a role that a lot of people rely on right if people run cav lines or people rely on cavalry then they're probably going to want severa here as well so she does bring a lot to the table in that capacity and then we have Minerva, who is the four-star focus unit of the banner, easy merges. I think her art is really great, but as far as her skills are concerned, I mean, besides her weapon, I feel like there's not a lot that she she brings. Um, but you could go in for the weapon, and again, you could go in for a plus ten for her because her being the four-star focus means that's that's not going to be as tall in order as a five-star exclusive unit. And then Inigo, uh, I mean, to me, he's just kind of fodder central. I feel like he has a weapon movement color combination that is very niche i mean he's a green archer flyer which has its i mean it has its uses but i feel like it's limiting as well so um that in, that alone i feel like limits his usability but at the same time he's got some great skills he brings a lot skill wise to the table because he's got the new dual skill he's got a rain skill his bow is actually pretty decent so from from a fodder perspective he's pretty good but i definitely think as far as pe what people are going to be going for, at least as far as power is concerned, the duo unit is, I feel, going to be very strong. I think Severa is also going to be a problem, at least as far as, uh, you know, being a Red Reinhardt, a, a better Red Reinhardt. You know, for me personally, I'm, I'm not big on the Dragon Babies. That's, that's not really my thing. So I'm probably not going to be going in for Duo Mur, even though I think they're pretty decent. Um, Severa I, looks good and, and Minerva look good. But at the same time, I don't use Cavalry a ton either outside of specific instances where I need to. And then Inigo is a flyer, but he's a green archer. I, I, I don't really see myself going for him unless to get the dual skill. But even then, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'll think about it. I think really I'm probably going to just be doing poverty pulls and for hopefully for Minerva just because I like her art. Um, that's that's basically it. But uh, but let me know in the comments below if you're excited for this banner, if you're, you're excited for these units um, and which target you're going to be going for. Hopefully you all enjoy the video. If you did, please feel free to leave us a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more Fire Emblem Heroes content. We thank you all so much for watching and for taking time out of your day to spend with us. We really do appreciate it. Certainly hoping you're all staying safe, healthy, secure, and united out there and wishing the very, very best for you, your family, and your friends. And until next time, let's predict those skies.